Okay, here we are. <clears throat> uh, I want to kind of preface this a little bit so you know the background. Um, this is from Brex Galileo. I actually played Galileo in Galileo in a college performance, um, but it was one of the most intense uh, pieces that I had ever done because somebody counted up the lines. I had like 700 lines. It was a three-hour show of mostly this guy. Um, so, yeah. Um, and in this, this is after Galileo has been threatened with torture and, um, you know, he's, he's going mostly blind and he's still trying to, like, write about science despite the Inquisition, you know, almost torturing him over it. Um, and he's trying to sort of work all that out. Okay, so this is uh, after um, his, his friend says, science is not concerned with our weaknesses, you know, like giving up to the Inquisition, as a for instance. Like he's trying to redeem Galileo, and Galileo is saying, I'm a shit person, like don't, don't follow me, you know? Anyway... <clears throat> No, my dear Sarty, in spite of my present convictions, I may be able to give you a few pointers as to your chosen profession. In my spare time, I happen to have gone over this case. I have spare time. Even a man who sells wool, however good he is at buying it cheap and selling it dear, must be concerned with the standing of the wool trade. The practice of science would seem to call for valor. She trades in knowledge, which is the product of doubt. And this new art of doubt has enchanted the public. The plight of the multitude is as old as the rocks and as basic as the rocks. But now they have learned to doubt. They snatch the telescopes out of our hands and train them on their tormentors. Prince, official, public moralist. The mechanism of the heavens was clearer, but the mechanism of their courts still murky. The battle to measure the heavens is won by doubt. By credulity, the Roman housewife's battle for milk will always be lost. Where it is passed down that this is of no concern to the scientist, who is told he will only release such work as his findings as to not disturb the peace, that is, the peace of mind of the well-to-do. Threats and bribes fill the air. Can the scientist hold out against the numbers? For what reason do you labor? I take it that the intent of science is to ease human existence. If you give way to coercion, science can be crippled. And your new machines may simply suggest new drudgeries. Should you then, in time, discover all there is to be s discovered, your progress must become a progress away from the bulk of humanity. The gulf might even grow so wide that the sound of your cheering at some new achievement may be echoed by a universal howl of horror. As a scientist, I had an almost unique opportunity. In my day, astronomy emerged into the marketplace. At that particular time, had one man put up a fight, it could have had wide repercussions. I have come to believe that I was never in real danger. For some years, I was as strong as the authorities, and I surrounded my knowledge to the powers, and I surrendered my knowledge to the powers that be to use it. No. To abuse it as it suits their ends. I have betrayed my profession. Any man who does what I have done must not be tolerated in the ranks of science. And see. Uh, yeah, not my best reading, to be honest. It's a little over the top. I think uh, it, I, I was, I had performed this on a big, giant stage, and so up close it might be a little much. But, yeah, hope you enjoyed.